we are we are a part of God's plan and if we can be ourselves we can then be used Never too much. I know, I know, oh. I know. I had to because you are who you are, the goddess of the pen. Real ones are coming. Stay tuned. But wow. Thank you. I, you know, I accept those flowers. I mean, to, I want to stop. I want to smell them. I want to see them. I want to live with them. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I love flowers, by the way. I mean, you know, same, same. I love them. Um, it's funny, even in this quarantine time, that's one of the splurges I have, I have uh, indulged myself in is flowers and candles, like, you know, those beauty oh, yeah. scents, you know? And so thank we you. Love thank we, you. Lo we love both. We love both. But you deserve that. You deserve to celebrate yourself literally on a daily basis. You are just, yeah. <laughs> Okay, seriously, I'm gonna call you real quick all the time. <laughs> I'm right here, Mara. Dial it. I will give it to you all day. I love to celebrate my people, especially because, like, you, know, we are. It's obvious how fleeting and how short and how, how unpredictable life can be. Yes. Um, and I've always just had it in me to do that because being this girl from North Carolina mm. that just knew how to dream. Mm. Anytime that I have these moments like this, it shakes me. So I just want to be able to be goosebumps. in it. <laughs> yes, I just want to be able to be in it and give you what you deserve because for some reason the world has been delayed on giving you that. And even if mm. they hadn't been, I would still be here giving it to you. Thank but you. I'm just, yeah, you. You, you know, I, I'm really settling lot. into, you know, we're all here. We're all having a, we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. And real, yeah. I think, and I just wrote a piece. I, I, I'm launching a website, just create a space for myself called In the Land of Mar. And I wrote an essay, in fact, to sort of get out my feelings. I think I express myself best in that space. So that's yeah. what I do. But it, it, the thing you just said, it's God's timing. I, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I'll be real, real with you. Come I on. have wondered sometimes, I'm like, do you guys see what I'm doing over here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Do, do, like, you know, especially when you, those moments in your, in, in our industry, when you're, it's time to get the awards or the attention or the recognition. Right. I really do believe girlfriends should have been winning Emmys a long time ago, like a long, a time, long time ago. And, you know, and, and shoot, NAACP awards. I think some, I'll be honest. I'm like, uh, no. And I say this humbly, we were better, <laughs> but we didn't get the flowers. You know, so and I like, agree. And so, but then you take and you sit, those moments sometimes humble you to sit with God and ask questions. Mm. And I will tell you, 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 and so many, especially the millennial generation, I heard God one day just tell me, Mara, look around. Your, your, your rewards, your flowers are everywhere. And really, your generation has told me, I will stop me on the street. You right now, um, I finally heard it. Like uh, you guys tell me all the time how much you love me, how much you love the show. Love me because you love the show. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and I don't, I get a lot of the credit, but it is, a, it is a collective, but I am proud of my vision. I am proud of, to your point about that girl in North Carolina dreaming. I was that girl in both LA and Kansas City dreaming. I right. dreamed all the time and, and I acted on my dreams. I didn't, and that's mm -hmm. what I would love to um, be, a, if, if we're gonna be a role model for anything, I would love to be a role model for that. I just keep going after my dreams despite, but God's timing, when we come back to God's timing, that's I did it. not see this, Danielle. So, you know, sometimes you wonder, where are your flowers, where are your flowers? God had something planned because this alignment of my new deal and my opportunity to tell stories mm -hmm. on a global level, which has been a right. dream right. and sometimes felt like, how am I going to get there? And then at the same time of the 20th anniversary and, and for the, the message in that bottle to wash ashore and yeah. it still be timely and 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 needful i believe um for this current moment and if, if nothing else to laugh um we we did celebrate our culture on that show we celebrated who we were 
as human beings that had the flyness of being black women. You know what I'm trying right. to say? Like, right. but we right. celebrated that. And I'm really happy. Um, the surprise party that God has thrown for me, God's timing. Oh, and so I your flowers it. right now, the flowers that are being rained on me, I am overwhelmed with love. I mean, a tidal wave, a tsunami of love. I'm just like, oh my yeah. God, I got I have to take the whole weekend just to go through, go through <laughs> all my Instagrams and Twitter and so, email. And so, so much more to come too, because to your point, God's timing is just so immaculate. Like we don't know anything, you know, when yeah. we're going through it in those no. moments where you know that you're creating gold and you're getting season after season and you're getting sought after because that's the thing when you're black and in Hollywood as a writer that's like what people are looking for me I don't have to apply for that so like <laughs> yeah all the things that <laughs> you, know, you know that all the things all the things, all the things, all the things that exactly. come so that they can prepare you because our eyes are so limited in the world we couldn't even be able to understand like the magnitude of what God has. Like if God would have whispered to you 25 to 30 years ago, hey girl, yeah, you're going to have to deal with this thing. You don't know what streaming is, but <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to deal with this thing where your work is going to be like, we're giving you carte blanche to do what you want around the world for everybody. You know, it's funny, like, would you're you right, believe that? No, because because I think at the time you can only dream as big as what you see. So it was, it was like, exactly. hey, I, I just want to be, you know, I want to be on as many, you know, on a bigger platform. Or we weren't even using the word platform, by the way. It was like a bigger network. You know what I'm saying? I want right. I want to reach more people. I want more people to see it. That's all. And you know, we plan and God plans, and God is the best planner. And and also we realize how small we plan, how <laughs> we dream. Like to your point, yeah. I didn't know streaming was coming. We didn't know. I didn't know any of this. So to be in this moment, all, and you can binge it. You can watch it however you want to watch it. You don't have to wait. <laughs> you, can just, yeah. you can be up all days. <laughs> We're about to reconsume the culture that you built 20 years ago. I also want people to consume the love. Ooh, because that's in there. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very obvious thread of care and, and personalization put on like, being a whole person getting these four women to be these women full full women so let's dig into that and what okay. you've been able to create um but first i always ask everybody to come here we've just been chatting i always ask you to share who you are besides your name and then one thing you love most about who you are in this world oh who am i outside of my name i'm a spiritual warrior that's what i am come on now and what do I love most about myself? My heart. I am loving and generous. I am, yeah, I'm loving and generous. And I, and I, I really do search for and embody joy. I think that is, mm. that's who I am. Yes, we love that. <laughs> what are some things on your joy list? Traveling. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> I'm traveling. One of my favorite things to do is um, I like to travel alone. I love to, I actually have three forms of traveling. I like to travel alone. I like to travel with my husband. I like to travel with my kid. And then all of us together. But the travel right. alone is where I really. That's it. I it's I love it. I went on a trip to Thailand um, last year, Ooh. and it was a game changer. It took me forever to do it. I kept living in my head about that idea, and then being actually alone. doing it. Oh, being alone in a form because I'll be honest, I don't want to negotiate what you want to do and what you know. What I mean? You, I don't want. I don't want to negotiate all that. I like to adventure. I want to see and I want to do, right. and I don't want to have to like compromise something I want to do in Thailand because you don't want to go nowhere or y'all tired. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you get to do, be on your own, do your own thing, be at your own pace. But I know what it does. It feeds the writer in me. It feeds my soul. And I think then I can fill my cup up with that and see other cultures and bump into other people, which is really just seeing human beings in a different context. And then it helps me see myself right. in a different context. Um, being alone with my thoughts quiet is very good because I love to talk. I talk a lot. 
and it, it forces you, especially when you can speak the language, it forces me quiet and right. I enjoy, and then journaling a lot. And so I get a lot of myself back when I go out into the world like that. And I'm stimulated by that. So travel is what I love. That brings me joy. And then oh, it's funny, I'm a Gemini. So I think all the Geminis out there are people who oh, love yeah. Gemini. Do you need two sides? So that's freedom. I need that. I need it. But I also mm -hmm. need anchoring and love. And I have that at home. Like I will say the gift of the um, quarantine for, for me and our family is the bonding time that we have done. I mean, when I do cook, like I don't, I don't call myself a cook, but when I commit to oh, something, you in the kitchen? I was in the kitchen. I can't be in the kitchen, you know, if okay. I have to be. But yeah, and I have a few recipes, but I tend to be like, you got I don't call myself a cook, but I can make Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? Like when I go in, yeah. I go in. You know what I'm saying? And I get right. you know, okay. follow a recipe I can read, so I can do that. But you know, so but listen, you can read, you can cook. Some can. some people say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that anchoring that family. I'm noticing that the thing I love was bringing me joy right now is literally setting the table. I I've, I've been even putting candles. Like I told you, that's my flowers, candles. Oh, I I use my good dishes. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. That that actually brings me joy. So those are the two. I would say right now. And I, I have music know. playing, sometimes a glass of wine, you know, that whole thing. The whole fantasy. Yeah, you got it. The Anita Baker got to be going. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only way the food will be good. <laughs> oh my God, love me some Anita. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that's the only way the food will be good. How were you growing up? Like, how? what kind of kid was Mara? Like, uh, what, did she, what was she into as a little Gemini troublemaker? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, I read a lot of books. I didn't, you know, I did not like, I didn't have the Barbie house. I didn't have, now if I went over a friend's what? house, I played with their Barbie, but I didn't have, I was a tomboy. I believed I could do whatever the boys, I was, a, I mean, kickball, boom. Te oh, and tetherball, I will whoop your tail. Yes. Tetherball was my jam. When it went around the pole? Yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh, <laughs> rap. It's a wrap. Um, I also had one best friend. Shout out to Lori Elam. I don't know if she, I should have told her. Shoot, she's going to be mad at me. I had, um, we called ourselves the Happy Campers. In fact, that was the name of my first um, production company, Happy Campers, because we lived outside of the box. You know what I'm saying? We, we lived in our own world in Kansas City. Um, mm -hmm. I was also, I was all, I call myself a mixed breed in the spirit of, Kansas City is the hard worker in me and LA is the dreamer in me. So I have two Perfect. childhoods in these places and they're both magical. They really are. Like I, in LA, I grew up on, it's so funny. Uh, I tagged her about this too. She's like, this girl's crazy. Um, Janae Iko has this song called Eternal Sunshine. And she talks about mm -hmm. um, Slauson and Overhill and riding bikes and water balloon fights. That was my life. That's what we did. You know, so we were like, yeah. that was me. I was at the beach all the time in LA, in Kansas City. I was with Lori. We were doing adventures. Oh, I was the girl who out the skate rink all the time. We would be praying over the phone oh, every, yeah, every Sunday because it's a school night, but that was the hot night. That's where the boys were. Right. That's where I wanted to be. So <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so I would, we would pray over the phone to go to, um, uh, uh, to the skating rink. That was me. So you would find me on skates. I had these red patent leather skates. Ooh. You couldn't tell me nothing. What? But at first, a actually, I, was, I thought they, skate. I had patent red. And actually, I was a little, I was a Christmas gift. And I remember I was a little nervous about, I was loving them. And then in public, this is, I got nervous. So I put black skate covers over them for like almost a year. And so it's almost like, and I remember saying, why am I afraid of these skates? And then as soon as I took those skate covers off, I was known as the girl with the rat, the red <laughs> patent leather. You know, I wouldn't rent no skates. You couldn't buy them <laughs> hot skates and then hide them under a bushel? I did. <laughs> I had growing to do, Danielle. I had growing to do, you know. You had to grow into them patent red skates. <laughs> yeah, I did. So I was I that know. girl. That's but I like cute. to read a lot. I listen. I mean, Prince was on my boom boom box. Okay, that's what we're saying here. Oh, <laughs> was my on gosh. my boom box. Yes, I did, Prince I was on the, the boom box. All the time. I mean, he's a muse of mine. I think if you just the emotion in his music is, you know, music is a. I use music in my work as well. I mean, I'm right. moved, and I'm and I I can explore it through my 
through my writing. I can portal, I can say that. Portal through my writing with music. So music is very important. Um, yeah, I was that girl. I love that. Well, I know that you were headstrong about writing as a career. And yeah. you tried to go the journalism route. And you said that that won't it. That won't um, it. Northwestern and all, it just was not it. Um, and you found TV and film and writing in that regard and like went for it for L.A. But when did you know you actually had something special when it came to writing? Like, when did you know, like, wow, I'm actually good at this? There was a really great moment. Um, I got to be a, uh, a writer's trainee on a show called South Central. It was for Fox. Yeah. It, was, it was run by my mentor. With Gina. Yep, that's where I met Gina. That's where Gina and I, which that's a funny story. I thought Gina, Gina was on top. Gina, Gina, that's where Gina Prince Bythewood and I, we bonded and we have been friends ever since. I'm so proud to be the godmother of Cassius Bythewood. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm just, you know, anyway, just, just joy. But, but y'all met was, there on South We met there, but I was a trainee. Okay. So technically I'm not a staff writer. It's a program, you know, it's all black people. And I mean, we always got programs. They just can't hire you, but I'm thankful for the program. <laughs> You know, I think, you know, I, I, that could be a whole nother real quick conversation. I got like, a lot of things to say about that. On that we talk about that. Um, but I'll never forget this moment. So it's a small table, um, but Ralph Farquhar was saying what he needed this moment to be. It was on the bus. The Renz Tate's character was Lorenz Tate. That's, I've name dropped on you. Um, <laughs> was was going to be. It, on, that's a good one. <laughs> was going to, um, you know, be on the bus and he needed to, to profess his love. Um, and so he's saying what it is and we're talking, he's talking, talking, talking about it. And I, it's funny, and I was nervous to pitch. I was nervous to say, because that's, yeah, that's what you do. You pitch it out and then you decide what goes in the Like script. you're at the table. And you you're have at the table. And the, this table is small. Most tables, like back in that, big, back in the 90s, tables were big. I mean, they'd be like 14 writers. This was a small Kathleen McGee Anderson was on there. Anthony, Michael Anthony Snowden was on there. Oh, God. Um, Gary, Gary. Anyway, point is small. And he's asking for what he needed. And I wanted to say it. And I was so scared, Danielle. So I just wrote it. And while they were talking, so I'm the most junior in the room. So, you know, the more senior writers are talking and hashing, going back and forth with what it was. And I just wrote it. And I remember saying, um, I have an idea. <laughs> Talking about that audible gulp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> crack, 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 crack. Heart <laughs> just about to die. I'm just about to die. But, but it's funny that that spirit warrior, she said, girl, you better speak up. And so I read it. it. I read it. And I remember Ralph said, now see, because I'm, again, I'm the junior. Now see. She up here writing. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? Now, this is what I'm talking about. And I remember leaving my body because <laughs> it was quiet after I read it. I mean, like, I, right. at the time, I wasn't thinking about it. But now what I did, I dropped the mic on them. But I didn't know I was dropping the mic because you all are in your feelings. Right? Right. right. <laughs> but so I remember then they started discussing it and they were really like building the pitch around what I wrote. And I remember leaving my body and watching it for a second. And I wanted to cry, but I was like, spirit warrior said, do not do that. <laughs> so then, do it, hold it. But hold it, hold it, hold it. But that's when I knew I got this. And, and, it, and, and you know, that takes, but you need, um, I, I, I tip my hat to Ralph in the character um, and, and, and Love Is and the Kadeem Hardison played and Norman. Oh, that uh, was him. Yes, it was, a, it was a bit of a tip to the hat to Ralph. Not That's that cute. he didn't, okay. it wasn't the exact portrayal, right. but he taught me so much. And he was, he, he loved hard in the spirit of he's going to make you rise to your best self. You know what I'm saying? He gave advice yeah. when he needed to and he gave space. And he gave support and he gave me, and I took up the space though. I want, you know, that's also, he gave space and I took it up. And that's on, what, honey. um, you better do that. so anyway, that's why I knew I had it, girl. He listened, <laughs> he gave you the space. And from there, he gave you Moesha. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Like, yes. 
talk, take us back to that first day coming into that writer's room. We got a little bit more confident. Were you oh, taking girl. with your ideas on in the Moesha writer writing writing room? But it was it was it was um I was shook on a different level because now the room is for, it's huge and it's 14 people about on that thing and how do you get in? How do you get a joke pitch in? And and what what's interesting, my strength is in story and my strength is in character. My strength is but pitching is very, you know, extrovert. I want to work on it, you know? Um, yeah. And so, but I had to get my voice out there. So what I would do is, okay, back in the day when I got in trouble, I was, I'm a really good mimic. So I would make my mom laugh so she'd forget how many days I had left on my punishment. So, oh, so I reverted, I pulled that out my bag. I, I would start it. I used to pitch in Kim's voice. In fact, you know, I'd be like, so I would just pitching. So it wasn't Mara. <laughs> it was I'm pitching in Kim's voice. So I would use Kim's voice um, to like, girl, that ain't. So what you doing, Moesha? I would be like, I would just try to hear her voice, so you know, and um, and that helped me get through. That's how I put through. And I had to, Danielle, because my last thing I'm going to say about this, I was so nervous. My worst acne was on that was in my 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 What's first scene, first <laughs> on when i tell you my face looked like a crater hot mess when i started speaking up that's when the acne went away let me find out you got the cure confidence is the cure <laughs> confidence is the same hashtag that confidence is the confidence cure, is, cure is acne. Well, listen tell that to the pimple that tried to erupt and change my life today just I was like, you know what? Oh, that when is I water. get off this live, <laughs> it's going to get attacked. You look beautiful, so stop it. That was going to stop you. right there. You look gorgeous. No. You always you always represent yourself beautifully. I love it. And Thank in the God. outer Thank and the exterior, interior. <laughs> Thank you, Queen. I appreciate you for noticing. You I never do. know who's looking. You don't. You never I know. I see you. Like, don't, you. don't even do this. <laughs> don't do it. Not going to cry online. <laughs> Spirit Warrior says, suck it up, girl. Because <laughs> I'm not good at sucking it up, child. <laughs> no, I I'm see you. I, I, saw, I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, no, I love you. I love you, love you, love you. So thank you for that. That means so much to me. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> have a hair moment hair break. I am the, I'm like where is my turtle shell um but that was so awesome for you thank you Mara and thank you for sharing those stories even showing up in these writer writing rooms so early in your career and being scared and shook and and making your voice heard because now <laughs> what a voice I, yes. like, I was telling them before you came in inking the overall deal y'all is so special I know it sounds beautiful and shiny, but it's exactly what that what it what it is. Like you are being trusted by these networks, in your case, Netflix, to create a global because you've platform. been trusted. Yes. Yeah, a whole streaming worldwide platform because you have been trusted for so long. Um, not many people have what you have. Like your talent gives life, essentially, right? Like yes. not over, not a high, hyperbole, not exaggerating. You have had shows that have literally breathed new life into the networks they were on. You know, shout out to the game. Shout out to the yes. game. Yes. Shout out game. to Love It. Shout Thank out to you. literally all the things you put your pen to. Um, because it creates classics. And you had no idea <laughs> that you were doing that and what you have done. But this have you become like accustomed to that now? Because I know we talked about the delays and God's timing, but like I feel like now we're like, well, she's just going to give us great blackness every single time. Well, what I do appreciate is that I have built a, a, a conversation and with an audience that they that I, I have now a safe place to be seen and heard and then and trust that they will that they believe in me. So it kind of bolsters. It helps me. But I think I also embrace the fear. I embrace mm -hmm. 
being nervous to top myself. I often sometimes say, I, I, when I watch my, my children love sports and I do too, but what I love is watching the greats as we all do, right? I, but I see my, and I was trying to talk to my son I was like, I see myself as Kobe and LeBron. Yeah, I'm the one, Damian Lillard. I should have the ball. I, I like the ball. I want to take the shot. I'm scared. You know, I know what's on the line. Um, uh, I, I like, I, but I also use the fear. I try to transmute the, the, the energy into, yeah, yeah try to use that because it's a lot of energy and fear. Our whole world is in, is in, like, if we could trans the energy around fear into love oh my god so wow. I think I I accept that I I actually look for what scares me you know what I'm saying actually in the work that I put what scares me because that's going to make me dig deeper and harder and make sure that I'm doing it right or you know what I'm saying? it just keeps me a keeps me on my game basically right keeps you and pushing. yeah keeps me pushing and so I um so and then in those moments that I'm nervous and all of that sort of, I, I'm really learning how to use a spiritual practice to get there sooner because I don't want to waste my energy. You know what I'm saying? I am, you know, I, I, I have a lot more on my plate, a lot more life on my plate. And so I want to be able to get to all of it. So I can't stay in fear. I got to transfer it quicker than I used to. Um, and raising the bar helps that being on Netflix, a global thing. I've manifested this. I'm really working on receiving what I have manifested, what I have co-created with God. I'm ready to do it. And so um, I'm here to do it. So let's get to work. And so I'm yeah. proud of that. I'm happy about that. And um, but I but when I'm in those tough days, um, I honor that through journaling, through meditating. I honor that through um Sometimes just giving up and sitting on the couch for a day. Child, <laughs> you please know? tell me about it. It'd be all the way lump on the couch. Just, yeah. Just lump. <laughs> this just, is where yeah. I'm going to be today, but I'm going to get up out of this. But yes. Today. <laughs> today. Yeah, no, I so, feel that. But I'm I ready. But, but, I even, because I, I challenge people, even the people in my life, because fear is such a, a horrible thing. And, it's, mm. and I know that it can be a motivator. But I'd rather not have it, right? I'd rather mm -hmm. look at it and be like, you know, God don't give us no spirit of fear, for one. Mm -hmm. So I try to take that and then look at it through the spiritual lens. It's the work I'm doing with my sister, AJ Johnson. Um, but I love AJ, that's right, that's right. Yes, yes. That's right. Oh, yes. That's oh AJ. Said. We have a mm -hmm. session every AJ. Thursday. But one of the things that she taught me was to look at stuff spiritually, right? So instead of looking at it as fear, look at it as new. Yes. Look at, you know what I mean? And so it's something that you won't, it won't make you cringe or it won't make you scared to like move. It's like, oh, it's new. Who, yes, yes, yes. That so kid spirit, in. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that kid yeah. spirit. I'm, yeah, trying to trap into it. I think, you know, one of the burdens on us as Black women is this, and I think in my work, I try to talk about it so much is that I want to shed this, this level of perfection, this level of, I mean, yeah, we are strong. I accept that we're strong, but we're yeah. also vulnerable and valuable and make mistakes and, you know, all those sort of things that we, we, we are limiting our, our, our opportunity to be fully human. You know what I'm saying? If we're only reaching for perfection. Really? And I say this, and some of that, that therapy is for me, by the way. You know what I'm saying? It's not just for the audience. I'm trying to work some stuff out. So, um, <laughs> so I think that I really want, like, even when I think about the, I know we're not talking about girlfriends yet, but the, the idea about Lynn, and sometimes, I'll be honest, the reason why I put Lynn in girlfriends is I didn't understand her. I didn't understand the Black woman who didn't have what you mean you don't have go like what you mean you have a you don't have a plan and a like but that's how we were raised as black women women right. and what that character taught me is that no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I deserve love. I deserve some support. I deserve some space to figure it out. That that's I so think, true. and it's so funny how your generation has really embraced her. I, I don't think Lynn's character was at the time of launch, at the time that we aired 20 years ago, people w didn't know how to take her. She was sexually free. She didn't have oh, any hangups yeah. about who she was. She was very honest. 
very honest. Like, I, you know, and mm -hmm. she tried things and if they didn't work, she changed her mind. We, we didn't know that black girl. I didn't know that, that black, black girl. girl. Yeah. And so she was like our, what do you call it? The Easter egg. She was like, or she was like the Christmas gift in the show. And I find was, was fun to watch is to see how the culture has really embraced her and, and women have embodied because they weren't, they were always Joan, Tony, or Maya, you know what I'm saying? But Lynn would sometimes get loud. Like, what about my other baby? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and and right. now, but, but what I love about her, that character, what she represents is that we deserve, like, like I said, everything. And we can also be driven and all the things that Joan yeah, and Tony and Maya are too. To as free as yeah, well. we but. deserve that. And I don't yeah. think we give ourselves enough of that, Danielle. You know what I'm saying? Even in the, like you said, the day just to say, I don't got it. I don't have it today. And it's okay right. to, I follow this. I love her. It's called the Nap Ministry. And I really love this idea of rest. Like we, Black women, I don't, I realized one time mm -hmm. in my house, I was like, Mar, you don't sit down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, do you sit down? I am now. I am now. My point is, and when I sit down, a lot of my problem solving, meditation, I cannot underscore, highlight, bold, because you get to hear <laughs> yourself fun. and you can really start to, my creative ideas come in, things I've been trying to sort out just from a to-do list, like do it like this, like, oh, thanks. You know, it's like right. so many, so much clarity comes into that um, and space and, and, and all the stuff that I don't really need to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Let that go. Right. Those things kind of come up, but now I am sitting down. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> Listen, you better enjoy it because it's a lot about to hit you. And because you got a whole network. Yes, I got things. <laughs> I got things to do, we, but we, we need stuff. So with girlfriends hitting Netflix, this it's crazy for me. It's crazy for you because this is like what you have built and it's coming back. But it's crazy for me because I've watched every single episode over and over again i have like taken subscriptions on certain streaming things to be able to try to watch it Aww. on dbt when it comes on it has filled up my dvr like i am a girlfriend stay oh and so to be here with you and have us celebrate this day for you is so incredible it is such a Thanks. big deal you know, Daniel, what I'm looking forward to, I'm enjoy I'm looking forward to watching the show. I did this with the game. Yeah. And what what I mean by that is sometimes my experience with the show, even when I watched it back then, I'm not watching it like you're watching it. I'm watching it like did they mix it right? What's working? Oh, that you're rhythm. I'm I'm, I'm constantly oh, oh you can see it a little bit. Oh, we're gonna do this when we go into the writer's room tomorrow or whatever. I'm 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 still critiquing, I'm still I'm still editing, I'm still tweaking, I'm doing all of these sort of things. And I realized I never really just got, or I'm, I'm watching it, worried about the ratings, I'm watching it, you know, all in that right, context. Right, right, right. And now I get to be, I get to be a fan of my own show. Like it's, it's, it's all like, done. It's done, it's I don't have to worry about it. I can literally yep. Netflix and chill and just really in, 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 and absorb. I found myself like when I was watching the game, I was getting my hair done. Shout out to Marvin Stokes. I was getting my hair done, and I was it's like, so "We did that. That was that was kind of smart. That was genius. Okay, that's crazy. I mean, it was like I just really got to enjoy it. And then the actors. I'm so you know what I what I can see. I'm, I know I'm in, I know what I'm gonna see with girlfriends t tonight is. I know how much love I put into it. I can tell right. you, I can give you the measuring cup of how much love I put into it, right? <laughs> You're like, I remember. I remember. <laughs> but I know, and then it makes me remember how much I know that Tracy, Golden, Jill, Persia, Reggie, I know, and Akeisha, Khalil, the, and, and then I, there's so many people who've come through the show. I mean, I mean, so many people. Yvette, I was so happy that, you know, Yvette Nicole Brown, which I love, she got her start on girlfriends being Tony's sister. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. That was like, start? Th yeah, she did nothing on her oh, resume. Wow. Robbie Reed introduced me to her. I was shout like, out to Robbie Whoop. Reed, the legendary. Shout out, shout out. The, all the black people. Yes. <laughs> Susan Goddard Smythe. Suzanne Goddard Smythe was another wonderful casting director who just introduced me to so many people. That's but my so point crazy. is, yeah. yeah, Keisha Sharp. Oh my God. Anyway, my point being, 
I'm got, I want to enjoy their love. They gave so much. You know what I'm saying? The directors gave so much. Shout out to Sheldon Epps, Salima Kill, Debbie Allen, Mary Lou Belli, Lindy Garner. You know, like, I remember Stacey Beverly getting her shot, the costume designer. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shout out to Don Morgan, who was our DP, who made sure. Now, this is real, because we were in the transition of HD. And so, and the lighting packages are not great for black women, but that brother figured it out so that the hue of black women wow. on Monday night was going to look beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The hue. I mean, you know, I'm also um, Wendell Johnson, who did the production design. I, I remember the blue bar? I don't know if y'all remember that, but the, when the lights would change. The blue bar. Okay. Remember? Up the stairs into the bar. They would go to the bar. <laughs> and remember the lights would change behind them. Do you know I had just... It drove the crew crazy for matching purposes, but continuity purposes. But that was one of my favorite sets. I love changing the sets, trying to show that we were out in the world from sushi sets to, you know, the little cafes yeah, to the really blue bar. Did. I discovered on the stage, there was this, the stage 23 from Paramount Lot, there was a hole in it and they had built it for another production. I'm like, there's, I think they had a subway set or something. So they had to go into the ground. I was like, there's a whole hole in here. So I was debating to put a, build something that I could use it. And that's how we came. If you remember the blue bar, they would come up the stairs, up the stairs. into the blue bar. And it was this whole yeah. idea that, you know, cause you know, that's how it is. You want to be in the VIP section of the place. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so it was I, like, I always noticed that at the bar that they would always have to come up the stairs to come into the bar. Yeah. So that's what you use the, the whole floor. Yeah, it was just fun. I mean, that I remember That's these dope. kinds of things. I remember the day that when, remember the Botox, I never knew it was about the Botox, but that was a heart attack <laughs> for me because we had, how much we had to get that right to pull that off, you know, and, but anyway, I, sometimes I'm remembering the show from that perspective and I just, all the fights you have, all the, you know, whatever you had to yeah. do, you know, I'm just, really excited to see it again and remember all the love that we had all the joy i i, I, I can hear jennifer lewis on the set right now saying like i'm so excited i'm just so excited to revisit everybody jennifer lewis tony's mom you had a lot of really just awesome moments and just great stars in there and just different cameos one of the things that i love are those easter eggs those little christmas presents you talked about Freaking Jabari's name out of Tony's mouth. <laughs> you know what's funny? Whose idea was that, Mara? You know what's funny? I think I, 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 I don't. I I think I I think maybe it was it was supposed to be a one time joke. The joy we the writers had in doing that. We would just some days come into the writer's room as a warm up and just oh, talk God. about the funny J names. And, and we, we would just crack ourselves up. So th what's fun to me is to see your reaction to the Jabari thing because I it's can remember so how much joy we had coming up with it. We thought we were the funniest people in the world. I thought it was so... But like Jill, but Jill, we got two seconds on Jill. But Shout Jill Marie Jill. Jones, she slayed that every time. It was almost like a tennis match. Whatever we gave her, we were trying to break her, and she never broke. She never. <laughs> I just live for how she would just always throw something out there, and I would be like, "Where would she even get this from? <laughs> what is?" <laughs> so I love, I love those moments. It's very reminiscent of like knowing Maxine Shaw eats all the time on Living Single, right? Yes, like it's just yes. One of those things that you're like, I just love that she's never gonna get Jabari's name correct. It's never, never, never Jabari. <laughs> Jabubu, Jabibi, Jabberwocky, Jamanji was one of my favorites. <laughs> so stupid. Um, I want to know because you are so adamant about giving the fullness of Black womanhood. Sexuality was such a big deal for you because you said, you know, Sex in the City. We won't end that ever. Um, <laughs> Not so, girl. We couldn't even be extras. <laughs> We're not even in the background sipping a, a Manhattan. Um, <laughs> but I want to know, because you have created powerful women and powerful Black women, what is power to you, Mara? And how do you see it in your life? Power is freedom and sovereignty. 
and 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 that is and on one side of the spectrum is for us to be ourselves power is really trying to not trying being yourself i think another level and then i think when we access that then that being allows us to then be of service to why we are here we are we are a part of god's plan and if we can be ourselves we can then be used i think mm. allowing ourselves to be used by god and our mission and actually going after our mission fulfilling our mission here is powerful and 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 you know as someone who is still finding her like even this i'm excited you're you're so loving to talk to so it's easy but thank you i don't I don't, I'm working on how to, how can I communicate verbally stronger, right? But what I do know is I'm really strong in, in communicating through, through my expression of writing. And so I think that's all yeah. we have to figure out is who that. are you? Who are you? Yeah. And be that, you know, you can work on the other things, you know, I'm, I'm in order to be more powerful or have a platform like Netflix to speak to a global audience, part of part of it is a little bit of not just not just the writing but who are you what you have to say and translating right. that back into and to be seen i had to sort of be seen raise my hand like i'm ready i'm ready for i'm ready and let's go do this together um but anyway power power i think is to be who you be yourself mm -hmm. and then be used for the greater good that's strong yeah. And powerful. Hella powerful. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that. Thanks and for with us celebrating your power, take us back to Mara 20 years ago um, and give her some encouragement, knowing um, where you are now. I would say on this journey, Mara, look out, enjoy the scenery, look out the window, listen, enjoy the music playing, get out the car a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Relax a little, sit down a little bit. You know, I think some so much of me was just, you know, driving. Um, yeah. You're gonna continue to drive though, because now we have this deal and you have so much content. To oh bring yeah. Us. I what, still what like you, to drive with the top do down. <laughs> up your what'd you say? With the top down. <laughs> with the top, oh, honey. Let you let it blow. Well, what do you have up that pretty little sleeve that you can tell us? Nothing. Y'all don't have to wait. Nope. Because nope. I know you stay writing. I do stay, stay writing. Stay ready. I do. I I call I uh, for the writers out there. I call it catching ideas. I I also I've been I've been watching us. I've been watching. I always watch us. But right now, where are we as a society? Where are we as a people? Where are we as women? Where are we? What are the things? So I've been watching and journaling a lot about that. What do I want to bring into it in a way that, um, you know, the way I do it, the way I, so I'm yeah. just been, I've been absorbing. Modern effect. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, you know, I still love, um, I still love pioneering and I, there's certain constructs. You're going to do a drama, a family, th you know, there's certain things that are going to be, oh, that's, you know, the same, but I'm still, I'm going to hold off on what, what are those things that are, that I want to pioneer um, of new thought or new ideas or the way that we are seen. I guess, you know what, let me try to get to, it's real simple. I just have a lot of portraits that I want to paint. Um, Beautiful. I have, I have, I've, been, I've, port, I've painted a lot, but I've, I now have the capacity, Netflix, I think I have the capacity to paint more and, and, and also, real. so I just want to get in there and get it done um, is really I'm excited. I know it's going to be some strong black lead situations. So I can't wait to see what you got. I mean, I know everybody is up your just on your neck about a girlfriend's <laughs> reboot or a movie or something girlfriends related. Here's what we're going to say. And we're going to bring back the beginning to the end. I'm, you know, this is the writer in me. God's timing. I'm trusting it. I, I have yeah. released it. And I believe also in all of the energy that is that that and I'm thankful, by the way, I'm thankful that people are using their voice for what they want. And I, I think it's great. I have benefited greatly. And I think I think maybe because I give back the culture has benefited greatly. So I believe it's going to happen when it's going to happen in God's timing. I trust that. Yeah. 
if it's yeah. supposed to happen, and I think I'm even there too, like if it's supposed to happen, it will happen. And I'm, I and I think that's that. that, 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 that advice I think I was trying to give to myself, it's going to happen. You're going to get it's there. Gonna happen. It's going to get there. So I may be, you know, me stopping at the cafe is my next hit show. And maybe when I get further down the road, maybe that's when the movie comes. I don't know. But it's, if it's supposed to be there, we're going to get there. Right. It's the, you know, the thing is, you've just created so many really great things. And then we've gotten used to you, like, squeezing a character out of this and being like, okay, now you take over. So we can, like, see the vision of so many things being created from what you've created. And then we're so addicted to it. We're like, girl, why else can it go back? Can I go? love that. <laughs> that is such a great compliment. And you know, I, we were teasing, like, up to the neck. I see up to the neck with love. I, that is a way to me that people are expressing giving me, giving That's love back to me. Yeah. I put love yeah. into it. Love is just only coming back. And I feel... I'm so thankful for it. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I don't, it's, it, I don't skip over it lightly at all. Um, but yeah, I don't have, the yeah, do. the stars will align uh, as they will continue to do. You know what I'm saying? The earth. Yeah. Is, and so I, I, I just, I trust that. I trust it's, that. But yeah. I have other stories, Danielle. I got a lot of, I, I got some too. things to say and, um, and I'm excited about, dipping my pen in some new ink you know and so i, I, you Ooh, know, I love that yeah so before you get out of here tell the people what you want them to know about your work and who you are in your work and i wrote a mission statement for my new company story 27 productions and what that the number 27 represents is the universal number for humanity and my work represents our our humanness. I actually feel like that's one. It's one of my most political stands in my art is to put out into the world, project out into the world our humanity and the humanity of all of us and how we're all connected. But really, our humanity. I think that that anything that I write about anybody is going to embody that. I also do not believe in positive images, just as why I don't believe in negative images I meaning I don't I don't play in that way I play in the human yeah. space that our our I think is just as damaging to ask black people to live in the place of perfection um as it is in in saying how you know and to lie about how horrible we are our humanity exists in the um between those polar extremes and um, so that's where you'll find me in the gray of our humanity, which deserves love and attention, support, um, critique, you know, um, that we are, if we're not here on earth trying to be better, reach a higher level, um, then what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? So, and, and so anyway, I, I think my work represents uh, the humanness of us. Yeah. You do, and you do it so well. We can't help but stand. Mara, I'm so glad that you are here. I'm so glad that your flowers are being received. They're beautiful. They have been well earned for decades. And it's just so awesome to see that you have gotten an extra new breath of life with your work and going forward, giving us this deal with more. I know. More God is good. It is it's just my so, it's time, Danielle. It's mine. Yeah. I'm made for this moment. I think, you know, I really Amen. am. And I'm excited. Amen. Real with